everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. When we left off in yesterday's video, we had just used my favorite resin pigments from Color Art to create a pretty enough resin pour. But aside from the beautiful colors, it was just another average pour. So I thought we should go a little nuts and make the piece extra busy in pattern and color to prep this for something hopefully special. The plan is to turn this into a glowing group of resin stones. To facilitate both planning out the position of the stones and the upcoming painting in of the black background, I used contact paper as masks over spots I loved in the resin. And <laughs> I asked you to have faith. So let's do this and see if your faith was well-deserved. <laughs> With the stone masks all down and the exposed resin sanded for tooth, I proceeded to paint any visible resin black. I made sure to make the coat completely obscuring. We don't want any resin showing through where it shouldn't. It would ruin the effect. I then let the paint dry for a good couple of hours. This is not the type of thing I'd recommend speeding up with a heat gun. I don't know how heat could affect the contact paper or the adhesive of the contact paper, so I don't think it's worth trying to make this go quicker by using heat. With the paint nice and dry, I began to peel off the masks. They released beautifully and left crisp edges behind in the paint. My fear had been that some necessary background paint might lift up when I peeled up the contact paper, but it worked like a charm. The trick was lifting up the contact paper every now and then, so I had to use a dull exacto that I keep for tasks like this, because my nails just couldn't seem to get under these little pieces of paper. Already, this is looking fun, but it's going to get much, much better. No, really. Faith, remember? <laughs> Faith. <laughs> and I think that's it. So, got little touch-ups to do and little extras to remove, but other than that, I think we're good. I think this is cool looking already. <laughs> so with my predominantly dull exacto, I'm just sort of scratching off any little overspills or little spots where paint leaked a little bit, like over here, things like that. I'm just neatening things like that up. And when you're doing this, I really recommend using a matte black paint so that you really can see well your little separating areas because if my black paint had been shiny, I think it would have been harder for me to see areas that needed touching up. So now I'm having to decide which side I want to be up and which side I want to have be down. I love this, so I think I kind of want to make that the top. I mean, that is just crazy pretty. Look at that. Can you imagine having a stone that looks like that or this one? These are super cool. I'm really excited about this. Okay, so now I have to decide where my light is coming from. And I think I'm going to have my light source be here. So I have to think about 
light shining on everything in this direction. So this part of each of the stones would have the highlight, and then this side of each of the stones would have the shadow. And then I also have to decide which stones are overlapping which one. Like for example, these two stones are touching. So one of these is overlapping the other. Is this one overlapping this one or is this one overlapping that one? Because that's going to determine which stone gets the highlight and which stone gets the shadow. So that sort of thing has to be decided as I progress. For my next step, I'm going to be using my white Posca paint marker. This is the one with the brush tip, but really any white paint pen can work. You just want something that's going to be able to paint white um, or off-white or some very light color and be permanent so that if you go to coat it with resin, whatever you used won't bleed as a result of the resin. So even a super fine point paintbrush and loose acrylic paint would work just fine. This is just super convenient. Now, because I'm going to be sort of resting my hand on this, I'm just gonna use a piece of paper to keep from putting down too many prints on the resin because if I get too many prints down, it would resist a new layer of resin. And I don't want to wear a glove just for this. So this little piece of paper is going to be my friend. <laughs> so like I said, I'm going to have this area be my first highlight. Just going to start with a very thin white line that I'll be expanding later. Just like that. And I'm deciding again which stone is overlapping. So since I'm deciding this stone is overlapping this one, it will get the highlight. This will get some, but not all, because I've decided this stone is going to overlap that one. So it will get a little highlight here, but not very far, and it won't get a complete highlight because this is going to overlap it here. So light would hit here, here, but here there'd be a shadow. So I'm not continuing this line. And that'll be the same down here. So I'm going to make more of these little decisions and finish this up. Now that step is done and I made the lines as thin as I possibly could because this is just the extreme edge of the highlight. I will be continuing the highlight but I made the lines for that extreme edge and also to help me sort of position the rocks in my head and know which stone is which and that sort of thing. But you sort of get the idea starting. So now what I want to do is make the extreme edge of the shadows. And for that, instead of using paint, I'm actually going to use an alcohol ink marker. So I'm using a Spectrum Noir marker and I'm using the color IG6. So this is a gray color and I don't want a black because if I use black then it's just going to obscure the stone. and. I want you to still be able to see through the stone, but to get a bit of a shadow. So I'm going to use this. So let's start with this stone. This stone is sitting on top of both this one and this one. So its shadow is going to end here. This is the shape of the stone. So this is the part of the stone, remember the light source is here, aiming this way. So this part of the stone would be in shadow. So I'm going to use the marker now to put in that shadow. And because it's an alcohol marker, it's transparent. So I can give a little bit of shadow without obscuring what's happening in the stone. And then with my Copic marker, this one's a little bit lighter also. 
a gray, I'm going to sort of fade out this shadow. And also with my blender. Let's do it again with this stone. So starting out with my darker gray, shaping out the bottom of the stone, transitioning to somewhat lighter gray. And not every stone has to be shadowed the same way. Like I can decide that this one is lighter in general. So I'm taking the lighter gray further down and then using my blender to make more of a gradient so there isn't like a harsh shadow line. Now, where a stone overlaps another stone, that shadow that it's going to cast on the other stone is going to be darker than its lower shadow. So I'm moving up to a darker marker. So this is IG8 in the Spectrum Noir. As the numbers go up, the colors get darker. So for this shadow here, I'm going with a slightly darker marker. And it's not a particularly big shadow. It's just really right along the edge of the stone. And if I want to fade that in, I'll use my blender and just sort of take away the harsh line. Just sort of break it up a little and fade it in. And same thing would happen to this stone since it's sitting overlapping this one. So the dark marker down. So now we already have this sense of these two stones being actual individual stones as opposed to one big blob. I've decided to skip that warm gray. I wasn't liking that color. So I'm just going straight from this one to my blender to fade it in. Yeah, that's even easier. Just using my finger while it's still wet to sort of fade it in. That was way easier. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is most definitely this the way to do this. Okay, I am loving this finger blending thing. Oh my gosh. I've never thought to do this before today. This is kind of awesome. Oh, I love it. It's such a smooth transition. I would never be able to do this with ink ordinarily because like if you look at this one, you can kind of see the lines of the marker, which I was gonna live with because I thought, oh, that would just look like texture in the stone. But this, this gives them really a smooth glassy look, which I'm loving. Awesome. Let's see now about that overlap shadow, if we can blend that in too. Because this one would have the overlap right here. Yep. Well, what I discovered is that the Copic Blender actually eats through the resin a little bit so instead of using it I've gone down to a much lighter gray so this is IG2 so it's really really light so I'm using that to fade my color better and what 
I really like about using the markers for the shading is that it doesn't take away any of the metallic sheen that's happening in the, underneath. So I still have my glistening really very prominent right through the shade. I love that. Ooh, that one looks just so pretty. Can you imagine finding a stone like that? Can, uh, would that not be just the prettiest stone if you could find something like that out in, I don't know, like a nature walk and you see that down on the ground? Wouldn't you pick that up? <laughs> the principal shadows, or what I'm going to call the internal shadows, are all in. So every stone has its contour shadow, the shadow within the stone. So now I'm going to continue working on the cast shadows. So the shadow is like this one where one stone casts the shadow on another stone. So that will really make each individual stone pop. So you already can see sort of make out the individual stones I think but as I put in more of these they will really come to life. Now for the home stretch. Putting in the big part of the highlights. Unfortunately, there's no white alcohol ink marker that I know of. And honestly, even if there was one, it would still be opaque. White pigments are opaque. They kind of have to be. So the best one can do to get a translucent white is to thin the paint or the ink you're using. So that's what I do. For this task, I'm using glazing medium to thin some white acrylic paint. I keep the two pretty separate in my little lid so that I can vary the level of translucency as needed by adding either more paint to the blend in the middle or more medium to the blend. I start by adding the brightest white or the most opaque closest to the white lines that I put in earlier. Then I transition to progressively more and more thinned paint. In other words, primarily glazing medium with a teeny bit of paint as I get further and further away from the white lines so that I'm fading from an opaque white to a translucent white to a hardly any white at all white. <laughs> the glazing medium goes down milky but it dries clear so I have to keep that in mind as I work because sometimes I would forget. I also try not to let my highlights get too big because since they are partly opaque they cover up some of the stone's sparkle and color, so I try to minimize that as much as possible while still hopefully getting decent contouring. This was probably my favorite step of this process because as I finished each stone, it was somewhat magical to look down at it. I mean, really, they looked awesome to me. It took a while to do all this, but I loved every second of it. I'm going to stop here. This is the type of piece that you could fiddle with forever. Improving the shadows, adding to the highlights. But I've been playing with this for a couple of hours, so it is time to stop and <laughs> start planning my next project. I absolutely love how this turned out. Some of these look like Labradorite to me or other stones that people could use for jewelry or other embellishments. The sparkle of the resin art is just gorgeous. I'm a little unsure though of how to finish this piece. I really like the contrast between the shiny stones and the matte background. But I also like the idea of protecting the entire piece with a coat of resin. The other issue is that the hand painting that I did 
you know, left texture. So you can see sort of where I put in shadows and the highlights because they, they dried with a different finish than the resin did. I've thought about maybe putting triple thick on just the stones because it would stay put and not run into the black area. You wouldn't want to sort of travel like resin would. But ultimately, I'll be happy with any finish because it's the stones that make me happy. Their amazing, luminous quality. They glow thanks to Color Art's wonderful resin art pigments. You've got to get some if you don't already own some. I would love to read your thoughts and ideas on what you would do to finish this. I hope you'll give this project a try. If you do, definitely come show it off in my Facebook group. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you have fun letting your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.